General William Huntington Russell was at a university in Germany, studied the ways of a secret society that is sometimes spelled S-C-U-L-L, -L, asked permission to transfer it to North America, and he did. And that is the, the beginning of Skull and Bones. Some 50 years earlier, during the time of the American Revolution, Germany had been the home of a secret order that many claim would be responsible for all the wars and conspiracies of the next 200 years. Could William Russell have become involved with a remnant of this German society? He also is on record observing that American Freemasonry and Rosicrucianism had, had drifted from their European origins and roots. And as, as a drift, they were losing sight of the secrets or of you know, the, the, the mandate, the purpose, uh, and the protocols of their existence. So he formed Skull and Bones to reconcile these arcane orders with the mainstream European movement. During this era, the mainstream European movement, especially among secret societies, was on fire with a concept of revolution, which involved overturning old systems of government, monarchies, and the influence of organized religion in particular. In the birth of this revolutionary philosophy, Germany played a key role. In his book, Fire in the Minds of Men, James H. Billington, the Librarian of Congress, writes that the revolutionary ideology of the 18th and 19th centuries was shaped not so much by the rationalism of the French Enlightenment, as is generally believed, but by the occultism and pro-romanticism of Germany. He goes on to say that this ideology continued through the reign of men like Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler. Billington writes of what he calls the Pythagorean passion of the early revolutionaries, a fascination with the ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras. According to tradition, Pythagoras was driven from Greece to southern Italy, where he allegedly founded a religious and philosophical brotherhood to transform society. Pythagorean philosophy dominated the signs and symbols revolutionaries used to define their movement. Billington writes that occultists became politicians and made special use of the two most important Pythagorean geometric symbols, the circle and the triangle, in dramatizing their challenge to establish power. In Germany, the leading revolutionary was a Bavarian law professor named Adam Weissant, who founded a secret society called the Illuminati. Billington writes that Weissop's final blueprint for politicized Illuminism, written during the first year of the French Revolution, was entitled Pythagoras. Pythagorean geometry plays an important role in the design for Washington, D.C. The entire layout of the city is based around federal triangle, a right triangle which represents the Pythagorean theorem. Could this have been the influence of Adam Weissopt and the revolutionary faith of the Illuminati? And if so, in what other ways could this mysterious and highly controversial group have impacted America? The Illuminati was an organization created in Bavaria. Uh, a Freemason named Adam uh, Weishaupt uh, created the Illuminati as an inner circle of Freemasons. And he was very definitely taken by the uh, period of the Enlightenment. He saw liberal democracy and liberal government, uh, not liberal in the sense that we use it today in political talk, but liberal in the sense of giving rights and freedoms to the citizen as an important way to improve the world. And his plan was to create this inner circle of Masons uh, called the Illuminati, uh, the Illuminati, that means the enlightened ones, 
and that this inner circle of Freemasons would then spread out among Masonic lodges, and then the Masons in turn would see to it that their members were put in prominent positions in government, and that then the Illuminati's influence would enable the uh, liberal uh, democratic principles of the Enlightenment to be spread throughout the world. It had three ideals. Separation of church and state, controls on the power of the state, and the emancipation of women. Three, uh, three planks in their platform, if you will. Now, one could say that the Bavarian Illuminati won, because, def because that, in, in, in effect, defines Western society. Because the Illuminati plan to change the world in many ways came to pass, some believe the order functioned through the revolutionary movements of the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. The cry for revolution around the world seems to have impacted all the countries of Europe and spread beyond to Russia, China, North Korea, and Cuba. But most controversial is the society's influence in America, something hinted at in the very date in which the Illuminati in Germany was founded. They, 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 I think they were supposedly formed in 1776, the same year of the Declaration of Independence. And the Illuminati was established as, a, as an organization, you know. He says, no, no longer are we going to take the orders of, of the monarchs in, in 1776. Now, that's, that's a pretty important date, isn't it? Now, you made reference to 1776 and the Illuminati. Can you draw a line? And I do associate the two because the language was so symbolic. It's too direct and too precise not to know that these people who envisioned such a new world were, were actually combined in the underground secret societies of Europe. Fire was an important symbol to the revolutionaries who were determined to destroy the old world in preparation for the new. As one of them declared, with a match, one does not lift up the world, one burns it. Weissop's Bavarian Illuminati sparked the flame of the revolutionary faith, but some researchers believe that at some point their flame was put out. They lasted about 10 years. Now, what lasted for centuries after them was the rumor and reputation that there is a secret inner circle of Freemasons that are plotting to take over the world. Uh, John Robison in Scotland wrote a book, Proofs of a Conspiracy, where he talks about how the Illuminati are trying to take over Masonic Lodges, and Masonic Lodges are trying to take over the world. But the American Lodges, by and large, externally, and we know, did not accept that because it wasn't needed. However, it doesn't mean that there weren't uh, lodges within the United States that did. You had to have had some Freemasons that were members of the Illuminati, but were they in control of any lodges? Don't think so, because it would be against the law. Uh, in the lower levels, they could talk all they wanted about it, but to get together as a group, as a function, as Freemasons, they couldn't. There was an Illuminati scare. How, how frightening is this? Uh, we've always known there was a Masonic Lodge down the street. Could they be infiltrated by the Illuminati? Are they secretly trying to take over our government? Uh, all of this is, is foolishness. The Illuminati went out of business after about 10 years. Uh, they never spread beyond, uh, much beyond Bavaria, certainly never to the United States.